everybody, it's Chris and I'm back to do another pour with you today. So I had this idea to do kind of like this gallery installation, if you will. And I thought it would be fun to choose a set of colors and then just do all kinds of different techniques, but keeping with the same colors, using different sizes of canvases, and then it just becomes one big art installation. I have this big wall in my office and why not just make this kind of a series of videos? I think it'll be really fun and it'll be fun to like try all the different techniques but using the same colors and then make one huge installation. So today I'm pouring on a 12 by 24 canvas. You can see that there's already something on this canvas. I did not like how this turned out and I thought, gosh, you know, I'm just gonna pour over it. And so today's the day I'm pouring over it. So the colors I'm using, um, these are the deep uh, gallery wrapped canvases from Michaels. This is what I'm pouring on and that's probably what all of these will be honestly because I really do love that thick canvas. So I am going to use warm gray. Um, this is a color from Amsterdam and I'm also using metallic cobalt. This is an artist loft paint. I'm also using Prussian blue. Um, that I believe is from Soho artist loft. And then I'm also using Champagne Gold. My Champagne Gold is actually this um, Deco Art metallic paint. I purchased it at um, Hobby Lobby, as you can see. It's just a really beautiful, soft, shimmery metallic, and I, it just it turns out really beautiful in pores. And then I'm also using one of my favorites, Prism Violet. And then I'm also going to put some Artist Loft Flow Acrylic White in with it, just to kind of keep it lighter and to help um, kind of create some of those cells. All of my paints have been mixed with my pouring medium recipe. And my pouring medium is four cups of Floetrol. I strain my Floetrol, one cup of Elmer's Glue All, a half a cup of Liquitex pouring medium, and about a quarter cup of water. That all gets mixed together. And then I mix that with my paints and I usually use about <clears throat> probably two to three parts of pouring medium to paint. And it all depends on what the consistency of my paints are to begin with. For example, this metallic uh, cobalt from Artist Loft is a pretty thick paint. So sometimes I tend to put just a little bit more pouring medium in it to get the consistency that I want. So I mix my paints based on pouring consistency, not necessarily... Like I'm not hard and fast on what my measurements are. I just go for like what looks right to me. So um, as you do this, you'll find that it's much easier to figure out what the consistency of your paints need to be and what works for you and what um, gives you the effects that you want. So I encourage you to um, just kind of work with your paints and figure that out. Um, it's very hard to tell someone how to mix paint because I don't know, you know, how thick was your flow trial to start with? Or I can tell you from experience that sometimes my gallons of flow trial are super thick and sometimes they're quite thin. So, um, you know, when you have different consistencies in the pouring medium ingredients that you have, that's going to give you a different consistency in what your mixed paints are. So, all right. So I am starting with five, seven ounce cups. I'm going for about 26 ounces of paint when I'm completely done. <clears throat> I did spray all of my cups with the WD-40 silicone lubricant. That's just so that I can release the paints out of the cup. It's not for cell effects or any other craziness that I'm trying to create in my painting. I find that my pouring medium gives me some really nice um, effects in the paint. So I don't need, I don't generally add silicone to my paints. So this is just my paint and my pouring medium. So this is the cobalt, um, blue which I think is just a really beautiful turquoise color I don't know for sure why they call it cobalt blue because in my opinion cobalt blue is not turquoise but uh, next is the Prussian blue and Prussian blue is kind of kind of gives you that same like turquoisey feel if you will and it'll also add a little bit deeper effect to it so that's going in next and then next will be the prism violet so I'm just going to continue to layer these paints, and I think I've got a little bit of a chunk in this one. Um, I will continue to layer these paints, and then I will bring you back in when I've got everything done and we're ready to flip. So hold tight. 
Okay guys, I've got all of the paints poured now and I feel like I have probably five to six ounces in each cup. So maybe a little bit more than what I needed, but that's okay. And I'm just gonna kind of move these out of the way. I'm gonna flip this guy over first. And I didn't put a ton of white in here. So I kind of really wanted my colors to pop and shine through, but there is just a little bit in there so that I get those effects. So I'm just gonna kind of push these up to the top a little bit and let that paint release. You can see that as the bottom of the cup kind of shows, then that's when the paints have released. And I'm just gonna kind of let them sit there and hang out for a minute and kind of let them do their thing in the cup there as the rest of the paint runs down. Very excited to see these colors. I really loved the first time that I poured with them and kind of unusual colors. You wouldn't think that it was definitely a different kind of departure for me for colors especially with putting in the warm gray and I don't usually use a lot of like earth tones, I guess. And so this definitely has a little bit of earth tone to it. Okay. So I'm going to start with the middle one and I'm going to pull it down to the bottom. My goal is to get all the way down to the bottom with the cup and maybe not have quite that much left over, but that's all right. I'm just going to run this up a little bit. It's been a little while since I've done a flip cup. So just kind of running that paint down there a little bit to the bottom. All right, and then we're gonna go for our next one here. <laughs> well, I am doing a bang up job here today. That's all right, we're just gonna continue to go here. You would think that I could do a little bit better at reaching the bottom of the canvas for crying out loud. and final cup there we go beautiful colors though and I can tell my paint is coming over on the sides which is good because I do want those edges covered I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of pour some of this paint right here just to kind of make sure that I've got everything covered up here since I've got a little bit left in my cup this will get run off anyway but it'll kind of help to make sure that everything gets covered and I've got a little bit here that I'm going to pour on this corner because sometimes corners are a little bit harder to get on to get covered. And like I said, most of this paint will get dumped off anyway, but this will just kind of help get things moving a little bit. Beautiful colors though. Gosh, I love that. All right, I've got some air bubbles here, so I'm going to go ahead and use my torch and see if I can get those popped. Okay, so I'm just going to tip off that way just so that I get the edge of that, um, that back edge of the canvas covered. Maybe what I should do is flip it around so I can see it. All right, so I do have a little bit to cover over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of roll this back and forth. I kind of want to try to retain my lines. Okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the bottom of the canvas or actually the top as it were. Cause I've got some nice paint going down over here on this side. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. I really love the cells that I get from the paints and the pouring medium. As I said, there's no silicone mixed into the paint. The only silicone that we used was just in the cups which was really a bare minimum compared to what someone would mix into their paint. So it was very little silicone that really got into the painting. But I will caution you that because um, if you do use silicone in here, make sure, I'm just gonna tip this back the other way and kind of distribute my paints a little bit. Do be sure that you clean this very, very well before you finish it because that little bit of silicone that I did put in there is enough to resist the varnish. So you wanna make sure that your painting looks beautiful. 
just going to kind of tip a little bit more off over on this side just because I know I've got quite a bit of paint on here and I want to make sure that my edges are all covered just kind of going to look and make sure that my ends are covered too really love how that turned out all right just going to kind of slowly let that roll back down towards the other side to make sure my paint is evenly distributed on the canvas and there we go all right guys so that is a completed painting so this is the flip cup style technique that is the first of the series of the art installation that i'm working on if you are subscribed, please make sure that you've rang the bell so that you can get notifications because like I said, this will be a series. So if you ring that bell, you'll get notifications of when I load up the next um, particular technique that I'm going to do. I haven't quite decided what that's gonna be, but if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have a fantastic day. See you next time.